camera frame. Oh, it's the worst. All right. So, uh, happy Thursday, everyone. Um, so I'm going to do something slightly different. Uh, I've been working on this self-portrait for about seven and a half hours. Jesus Christ. Um, and I do want to uh, not look at myself for another two and a half hours. God, that's going to be the worst. Um, so instead, I'm going to doodle. Uh, and I'm trying something slightly different. Um, so normally when I draw, I tend to draw something that is... Um, uh, kind of like framed around, well, actually drawn around a frame. Here it is, not framed around something else, a drawing. So typically when I draw, I will draw a kind of interesting set of shapes and build our thing around that, and everything is fantastic. We're not doing that today. Uh, nothing wrong with it. In fact, that hey, it's carried me through till now, so we're going to just draw whatever I feel like. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So um, I, I, the reason why I'm doing this is because I saw a recent uh, set of YouTube videos from a uh, very talented sketchbook artist. I think he's actually a professional co uh, co concept artist. Uh, and I think it's just really cool. Totally inspiring. Going to not rip him off because I can't draw nearly as well. Um, and <clears throat> these are just going to be like what I would consider sketches. They're not going to be anything fancy. Uh, if I don't like it, I'm not going to keep drawing it. So, um, all right, let's see if I can keep moving this guy over. All right, cool. Okay, so um, start us off, we're going to not draw any gestural shapes. We're actually going to just draw like directly onto the canvas. Have my handy dandy Apple Pencil. It's fully charged. Learn from my misadventures. Do not try drawing with like 2% uh, left. And this is going to be at 100% opacity. And this is what the line looks like. And if we look, draw head on, it'll look a little better. Uh, if we tilt the pencil, it will look like that. So you kind of know what you're looking at, right? So let's do it. Uh, I haven't actually drawn like this in a very long time, uh, and I don't know what we're going to make. So it could be terrible. But we're actually, so basically the idea behind this is normally the gesture drawing gives us the shape, and then we build things on top of it, and we can build, our, build it outwards. This one's a lot more mindful. We're actually going to draw uh, whatever comes to mind. But everything that you put down, you don't erase. So everything has to be plopped down very carefully. All right, cross your fingers that this doesn't come out terribly. Uh, and I will erase where like I may have done an accidental pencil, pencil mark. So come at me. All right. So, um, and again, I'm gonna fill up this whole page, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna start on the right-hand side because I'm left-handed. Good, good point of reference for all of you lefties work right to left. Uh, and here we go. And we're going to work fairly quickly. Um, and again, this is kind of to make sure that uh, whatever we are working on fills up the canvas quickly, uh, mindfully if possible. And uh, as we work our way to the completion of this, uh, we can kind of do whatever we want. Um, and this, remember, the, your first drawing of the night, it's like a pancake. It always looks terrible. So we're not going to lose any sleep over it. And if we like it, we can keep working on it. If it looks terrible, hey, guess what? No worries. We can just scrap it and continue on. So the one kind of annoying thing about this pencil is that I tend to typically draw with a mechanical pencil. Uh, mechanical pencils are absolutely fantastic for drawing um, 
uh, you know, concise, straight, pointy lines. You don't have a lot of line variance. Uh, some people like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with line variance. I think having multiple thick and thin lines is great. Uh, but if you want that and you want to continue doing that, uh, strongly recommend working with graphite, just a standard non-mechanical pencil. And feel free to zoom in as needed. Uh, but again, we're going to just draw whatever we feel like. And we're not going to lose any sleep over how good or how bad this is. Uh, the nice thing about drawing is, especially in the sketchbook, and this is something that the streamer I was talking, uh, not streamer, YouTuber, um, kind of was talking about, is you don't have to really care about whatever you're drawing. Um, but having a sketchbook, and I actually did buy a sketchbook, a smaller sketchbook, which is like, I didn't think I, I would ever do that, but that's how inspired I was. Um, it was that as you fill it up, it kind of tells a story of what is going on in your life, what is going on in your mind, uh, and you can uh, just work to your heart's content. And I think that's really cool. And I actually have never really thought about sketchbooks being anything more than uh just like a means to an end so i'm going to start treating it like that as well and i gotta find a way to stream uh my sketchbook drawings on camera because that's really hard to do like you have to have a whole rig and everything so not there yet not going to be there yet we're going to just continue drawing as needed oops that was a total accident So yeah, that's basically what tonight's drawing is going to be, a oh, series of drawings is going to be basically draw whatever you want and don't worry about anything else and feel free to scale things, oops, not that. Uh, Uh, so I hope everyone is doing well tonight. Um, kind of excited about it being Friday tomorrow, so we're going to hopefully spend more time drawing this weekend. I don't know what happened, but recently I've just been really fascinated by, like, hey, I should be creating more often, and that's what we're going to do. So hopefully I will not hate uh, drawing at the end of my self-portrait. I really look forward to um, uh having my self-portrait complete. I mean, I really like how it's coming along. So this is what the reference material looks like, and this is what it will currently looks like. Nothing wrong with it. The shirt needs to be worked on. A lot of things need to be worked on, but I'm actually very happy with where we're at. Hey, Ethan, how you doing? Hey, cool. Are you drawing it freehand? Drawing a circle freehand is not easy, FYI. Um, yeah, happy Thursday, man. Uh, I'm actually just doodling tonight, uh, so feel free to tell me what to draw, but uh, I will honestly tell you, probably not going to draw whatever you tell me to draw very well. <laughs> And I'm just basically not pressing very hard. I'm letting the pencil kind of do what it wants to do. And as we progress, uh, hopefully the ideas become a little bit more fleshed out. So, um, yeah, yeah, that cup is smart, very smart. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you're continuing on with the drawing lessons Sorry if I came across as a little dictatorial. I came from a very rigid, like, learning how to draw background. Um, and often I tend to speak 
in very kind of far extremes, uh, which has helped me, may not help you. So, you know, if you like what I'm saying, power to you. Uh, if it does not, if it is not helpful, absolutely tell me to fuck off. I will totally understand. And so one of the reasons why I like periodically doing these types of drawings is because it uh, is a kind of a more organic approach to drawing. You're not necessarily beholden to whatever you put down on paper. Um, and sometimes uh, having no plan is just the best thing for you because often whenever we start drawing for like really long periods of time, we kind of get into like this weird uh like this is how we have to do all the things all the time and uh you know if it works for you and you're happy go for it if you don't like it find something else to do so um and i like this periodically because um you know it's something new something different not too mad at it. Yeah, I mean, everyone should be hy hypercritical about the things they're passionate about. Um, but obviously, don't do it to the point where it makes yourself miserable. I've been there. I, I can honestly say I was a very miserable youth. <laughs> But see, I'm not being, oh, and actually, uh, in case you uh, are curious about what I meant about jagged lines, this is, these are jagged lines. Uh, because I am a little unclear where I want it to go. And I want to kind of make myself not think that way, if possible. It's, so it's sometimes really hard to show where uh, these lessons become valuable. Typically, you want your lines to be secure and sh self-assured. And it's really hard to explain that without sounding com completely crunchy granola. Um, And if there's a bunch of really great YouTubers that just do drawings, uh, typically I like to follow people that don't have super strong personality types. That is just like really just too extreme. I mean, they may be very good and often they often are, uh, but it is just exhausting. <laughs> Dumb question, why would you draw some spiky lines and stuff around the eyes or circles on the forehead? Um, because I was testing out, hey, maybe this person needs a bindi. Um, and you can draw a lot of emotion of someone with very minimal lines. So, um, you know, the eyebrows, like we as humans are programmed to identify 
facial features as expression. So having, and, and, it, and it goes super simple. I mean, emojis say this all the time. So you have that is a sign of happiness, right? And if you do the same thing, it changes to rage. So we can use that as a way to draw certain types of emotion. Um, in some cases, I'm actually just going to continue drawing this like weird belt headed lady <laughs> mohawk. Um, and at first I thought, hey, a bindi would be kind of cool. Uh, and I'm still not mad at that idea. Um, so some ideas are going to be better than others. Um, when you're just doodling for the sake of doodling, uh, it can be very kind of freeing to just draw whatever the hell you want. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, it's a sketch. You don't have to lose any sleep over it. Um, But it does help to be um, kind of still thinking about the process and be very kind of critical of the stuff that you're doing. So if you don't like what you're doing, you can just scrap it and move it elsewhere. Actually, I really like where this is going, so I'm going to keep drawing it. Um, and if you hate what you're doing, you don't have to keep drawing it and i'm okay with that too because honestly uh there's plenty of drawings that i've done where i'm like what was i smoking which is really funny because i'm pretty straight laced as a human being i don't really do a whole lot of like dodgy things really So notice how I didn't draw any of the bones on this, like I would be drawing um, just a standard uh, gesture drawing. I'm just drawing contours and seeing where the drawing takes me. And this can be okay, this could be fine. It could be really bad. Um, I will warn you that often these, like it's just one oops away from like, <laughs> to the elephant graveyard you go. Um, but sometimes, you know, uh, it can be kind of a cool little experiment with uh, your pencil and letting your pencil do all the thinking. Dodgy things are often really good. I just grew up like with a good, healthy fear factor about everything. Um, and I find that not having done drugs, I rarely drink. I don't stay out late, don't do anything dangerous, really, really safe person. Um, can be really good for uh, my life insurance policy. I'm sure my life insurance policy loves me. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, but if, if, if dangerous things is you, by all means. I remember talking to an older gentleman who hired me to help organize his life and he was like talking about some drug he did in the 70s and i'm like tell me more about this i can live vicariously through you he's like yeah trust me you don't want to do this <laughs> and i was like okay lesson learned So here, you don't really have to worry about um, like line weights. You don't have to worry about uh, scale. Things don't have to be perfectly like you know realistic. Honestly, it's sometimes better that it isn't. And that's how you get into these really cool other comic artists, comic book artists that I just really love. Adrian Alfona, who did Runaways, and Miss Marvel, uh, was like just like love his stuff. Super crazy whimsical uh, way of drawing and I just really liked it uh, but it's not for everyone <laughs> so I totally accept that 
and I'm okay with being like that one guy that likes his artwork. He does have a following. He's, I mean, he's, you know, gainfully employed. Um, but he uh, has like this really kind of loose way of drawing. I can't even like uh, attempt to draw the way that he does. This is just like super thin lines, very expressive, like it a lot. So <laughs> I think every relationship should have someone who's a little bit more free than the other person. <laughs> And so I can use everything that you see here as a way to um, build the next drawing. So I'm like, okay, I like this mohawk. This was the original form of the mohawk is this. And now it's like a belt snake thing here. And we're gonna keep going and see where it takes us. And who knows, maybe at the end of this evening, it'll be like a cool Medusa lady um, who, uh, is like what I like. And if I like it enough, I will just keep drawing it because I think it's kind of cool. So something like that. And maybe I'll just pivot totally in a different direction. And there's nothing wrong with any of this. Uh, so if you wanted to, we could add a cool harness on her. Uh, that seems to be very fashionable nowadays. And let sort of interesting shapes take on its own life, you know? And then when you get bored, start the next drawing. <laughs> so nothing wrong with that. I think it's a fantastic approach to art. Um, yeah, I, I miss drawing in a sketchbook a lot. Um, perhaps when I return to the office and my commute, I will start drawing more regularly on the bus because I used to do a lot of drawings on the bus. I think that was like the best thing ever when my commute was like an hour long. Oh, I do not look forward to wearing uncomfortable pants. But keeping your hands loose. Uh, so uh, Ethan, like this is where a lot of artists hold their pencils is way back. And this way back prevents you from mashing too hard on the paper. Same works on a tablet. And then as you progress, your, your pencil holding goes from there, climbs up, and it goes down to the fine point. And that fine point is sometimes really helpful for control and drawing really dark lines. Um, but initially, Drawing hard is kind of dangerous for your paper, it's hard on the wrist, all that good stuff. So, yeah, buyer beware. But a lot of people do not draw like this. So. Um, pens, I mean, because pens draws typically opaque, uh, not so much. But in terms of having a loose hand, um, it is sometimes a little better to still draw fairly loosely. If you're drawing with a ballpoint pen, you kind of have to draw firmly. Um, pens is like its own sort of beast, honestly. Uh, I have a friend that draws with a fountain pen because he's a douche. Uh, I'm joking. He's solid of the earth, fantastic person. 
but uh, it is very different from drawing with pencils. And sometimes it's really good to sit outside and draw from nature, uh, depending on what you want to draw and get better at. Uh, I do kind of believe in the uh, putting in your 10,000 hours. Uh, but just like every other type of hobby, treat it like a muscle. It's like a fine-tuned draw all the time. Take risks. Be critical of what you're doing. And then things fall into place. Uh, and the more you do it, the better things will get. And you don't have to worry about like these failures as like, oh, I suck, I'll never get better. Literally every single hobby I ever got bet good at started off with some colossal failures. And I'm going to break a couple of rules in adding a sphere for a head. I think it's going to be a little easier to kind of work my way th through. How's the Kirby drawing going? And so, like, you can draw more gesturally if you like. I tend to draw fairly gesturally, so this whole thing that you're seeing right now is kind of, like, a little bit more challenging. Uh, but there's definitely, like, pros to both, cons to both, definitely. Um, breaking out of my shell is a little hard. Uh, it's a pretty, t pretty rough. Thought it would be easy because of all those circles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the one thing about, uh, Kirby is, and just like drawing in general, um, let me see if I can show you roughly. Hey, look, I have a circle. Uh, I will actually delete that. Um, and let's say this doesn't have to be in the color that you want necessarily so but we'll make it pink because he's roughly pink ah, nope. um I, i'm not doing this to upstage you by any stretch by the way still two right so you have a circle circle is good um one of the hardest things about drawing characters that are really simple is often you have to kind of know where the parts of him are placed and that is really not easy so um and it's harder on a circle because it's so hard to know where the reference points are because everything is literally a circle um so if I had to draw Kirby, uh, and this is going to look terrible, so I apologize in advance. Uh, 
let's see. And mind you, again, I'm kind of cheating because I have uh, a tablet. And what I need to do is kind of like know where the reference points I'm looking from the photo. <laughs> yeah, it this does not need to be uniform. And again, I'm not super big into Kirby. Uh, we can continue. And so uh, the lines you see me doing, they're one stroke lines, which is, uh, again, better to be more self-assured than anything else. And then you would literally start adding in, uh, actually, you know what? I'm not sure if it's because I have the opacity turned way down. It is. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So one of the things that is sometimes really, really hard to do is placing where things need to go. Um, and... I need to look one more time. Okay, so. And when I say where things need to go, I mean like, how do we place these objects in space in relationship to everything, ah, um, every everything else around it. So, his mouth is really small. That sounds really weird. And so, what I'm doing is I'm roughly just looking at where. Uh, his body parts are in relationship to everything else. Um, okay. And because I'm working on a uh, 
He's a weird looking character, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, so uh, you were here uh, with one of the streams where I talk about um, using reference points. So, uh, this is terrible, but pretend this is like, okay. Um, we can uh, let's see if I can bring in. Hold on one second. Let's go. Okay. So we're going to bring this guy in. Okay. Um, God, that looks awful. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to crop that, I think. <sighs> okay, pretend that this is our reference material, because that's what it is. Um, okay, and I'm going to bring this guy over. And this is what I roughly used to draw this horrible monstrosity. <laughs> um, so let's pause the music because this is actually requires a little bit of, of ex explanation. Um, let's put in some red lines that show what I meant by sort of these like reference points, right? The easiest one for me to kind of look at is this bot. Mm -hmm. Okay. This this bot here. Uh, pretty much any any sort of vertices that you can uh, pull from are going to be the most helpful things for you to kind of look at and say, all right, those eyes are vaguely in the right place. But this hand here isn't. It's way too big. Uh, how do we know that? Well, if you look at the um, Kirby reference material, his foot if you drew like an imaginary straight line up, it sticks out further than that hand. So this hand probably needs to go like, uh, not, not nearly that far out, like there. So, this is what I mean by like using these reference points. 
these eyes, if he were to draw a horizontal line straight across, is these eyes could probably go up a little bit. Uh, oops. Um, but you kind of get the you know, the sense that like when you look very objectively at the shapes, everything needs to kind of fit correctly. Uh, so like this vertices, if it was in the right place, is actually kind of where the eyes would end. So if you draw like, I don't have the reference material that I can work from, um, but basically you just want to constantly look carefully at what you're looking at. It is so hard to do this with a circle. So hard to look at with a circle because the circle is fine. Building the shapes around it is so challenging and it's hard to sort of say that in a way that makes sense, but it's absolutely true. Um, I mean, breaking this down further, uh, Oh, you can see me. I can see me. Um, the space here between his legs sounds really weird. Totally true. Is way too wide in my drawing than it is in the reference material. Um, also, pro tip, the reference material, uh, you can't draw his left foot. Or not much of the left foot because you don't know where it ends. Um, so... That was on me. That was the first picture I saw that like, looked like an easy thing to draw. Um, anyway, so you can continue like where everything is. So like if you drew a vertical line down, uh, his leg would actually come out further out like that. Uh, so basically, like when we talk about measure drawing, this is what measure drawing looks like. It looks like I've defiled Kirby, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, that's not easy. Um, I would recommend uh, doing it over and over again. Uh, but basically, uh, you want to like constantly break down where everything is. Other thing that is really obvious is if this hand, if this uh, shape is in, if this armpit is in the right place, we know that his back leg actually needs to come up out from here, almost like that. So that's how we know a bunch of things are off. Um, and this is why I mean like you have to look super critically at everything. I'm assuming his body is a pierce, like a, a perfectly round circle, right? It's hard to tell. My brain is kind of turning off. <laughs> so, um, not easy. But yeah, this is how, like, when we can look at something and say something doesn't look quite right, that's how we know. Um, when we're looking at this and we start flashing the original photo, that is actually how we can see, like, all right, so the lips are off somehow. How do we fix that? We have to look at that really critically. Uh, the neck is slightly off. That's fine. These are all easily fixable things. But if I first make some lines on my Kirby, the limbs would probably look more symmetrical. Um, I mean, everything that you're seeing right now, like these lines, is like pretend these aren't actually there. It's basically like we're lining up with our eyes where shapes are going. Um, and we're basically creating like fixed points that we can re refer back to. Um, and the more you draw and the more you look at something critically, the easier this whole process gets. Not joking, totally a thing. Uh, and the less you look at something like this, uh, the more your brain starts to get soft, like a hacky sack, um, and that's when mistakes start to happen.
like I'm saying I should have because every limb is a different shape of mine. Yeah, um, it's hard to draw something that is so simple. Uh, I actually saw it on a game show today. Sometimes simple is the hardest thing to do because you have nothing else to hide behind. And that is so challenging. It is unbelievably challenging to draw something that is simple, that looks accurate. Uh, <laughs> you know, I hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but, you know, yeah. It, was, it, it is not something that will come naturally to a lot of people and drawing can just be one of the hardest things to learn what how to do well uh, but you know that's we all have our strengths and weaknesses right I can't wait till my new sketchbook comes tomorrow, though. I am super excited. That's how good those videos were. Um, here, actually, I will send you a link to what I was, what I'm talking about. Yikes. Here it is. Um, it is like a his stuff is really solid and absolutely like inspiring to watch and i would love to see more of his stuff i'm, I'm watching in the background so <laughs> if you get bored and want to see like what I find inspiring, it's stuff like that where I'm like, oh, he actually spent time filling up sketchbooks and size does not matter. I've always grew up thinking eight and a half by 11 minimum size. Anything smaller, little harder to digest. Um, I would recommend like working larger than smaller. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And all of his sketchbooks say front on it. I, I, you know, I won't yuck his yum. I don't like having writing on my sketchbooks, but you know, you do you, boo. Yeah, and this stuff is really solid, like really pretty, need to be maybe not necessarily locked into just comic book style portraiture stuff and maybe just branch out and do like kind of cool design stuff. I think it would be kind of cool. I like watching people be creative. Uh, always have. I, I, I once was at a convention where I, I basically asked a lady if I could just sit and watch her draw or watch her sew. And she was like, do you work in insert super boring field? I'm like, no, just like watching people make stuff. I could watch for hours. That's a really good ink company too, Orushizuku.
But his other stuff is uh, very good. He went to art school and is a concept artist for a video game company, I think. Yeah, it's just really cool. Really like his stuff. Yeah, I think passion is both overrated and underrated. Like, people can be passionate about things that are just, like, super boring to me. Um, but I really like people, like, my, my whole thing is, like, passion where it's, like, they create things and they like the things that they create. Um, and it's really cool. Like, pattern making is really fascinating. Uh, I have my wallet. I took up leather working ages ago. This is my, my wallet. Uh, it, right there. Uh, has like a bunch of cool things in here. Um, holds like, it's a very thin uh, profile for a wallet. I've had it for about a year where I've, I'm testing it. Wallet has aged beautifully. So, like, I like people who make stuff. Uh, if you stick around long enough, you'll probably see me, like, knitting, crocheting, sewing. I actually have a sewing project, like, that way um, that I just need to finish working. I'm going to save it for the weekend. That's a good question. Um, do I have an art schedule or do I just do whatever I feel like? I will draw and create in really weird like bursts of time. Like recently I was like, I want to draw myself. Horrible, horrible idea. Uh, because that actually means sitting in for like 10 hours where I have to sit and watch my dumbass self smirking. It was that, that picture that I that you saw is for work and I hated it still hate it um, and I don't know why I decided to do that uh, but the yes I try to draw uh, pretty often but usually not on camera uh, so some of the stuff I did was when I was traveling for work like this is something I did while I was on the train uh, heading to my work trip um, I need to draw more often, clearly. Uh, and usually I will have a plan in mind. So if you ever see me just like out and about, like on the bus or something, I'm going to just be doodling. Um, but yes, to answer your question, no, I do not. <laughs> I need to draw more often, clearly don't. How about you? You play video games on your stream, right? Are you going to start drawing?
but I will try to draw more on the weekends. That's usually when I have the most amount of time. Um, and at least once or twice in the evenings if my work schedule isn't killing me. It isn't generally killing me. Uh, have a very good work-life balance. The goal is never to be good. The goal is to be get better. Better is a wonderful, vague sliding scale. <laughs> And I love learning new things. If you check, I, 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 you've seen my website. Um, it's just like a hodgepodge of really random stuff. Are there other things you were interested in learning how to do? Or, yeah, any cool hobbies? Uh, good luck with that. Learning languages is not easy. Uh, I would love to learn uh, any language aside from English. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, that is a good skill. Yeah, I mean, honestly, language stuff, 
would be so cool. It would be so awesome to learn another language. Do you do you like Duolingo or like what is your how are you what is your method for learning a new language? I don't know why I did, did that. Yeah, that probably makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I uh, am not really super strict with my learning abilities, so. Okay, that's cool. I would love to get into meditation more. I have a very restless brain. Um, I like it. I like my brain for the stuff it lets me do. But usually when I'm lying down, the last thing I think about is sleeping. It's always just like, go, 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 go. And I don't, ha I don't have my phone with me in bed, but I have my iPad, and usually if I can't sleep, I'm on my iPad. Yeah. Off breathing style? What is that? Off breathing. Alright, I just YouTubed it, and if I do it, will I have these six pack abs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same. All right, all right, we're 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 on, we're on the right path here, folks.
sorry, my eyes look wide because I'm like really distracted by the giant inflating bubble. And I'm like, oh god, it's giving me anxiety. <laughs> um, fascinating. I will check that out after streaming. I actually have been meaning to get into uh, meditating, and I have clearly not. That is very drawing, FYI. And one other thing I need to be paying more attention to is my posture while drawing. Like, I feel like I need to have my head straight. I actually, like, slouch quite a bit. But sometimes drawing is just kind of very liberating in terms of the, like, doodling is extremely meditative. Um, and I kind of like that. And actually, one of the really helpful things is um, when you're practicing is to step back every five minutes and just let yourself uh, kind of soak in what you did. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, why don't you like it? And being critical can be both helpful and incredibly destructive. <laughs> uh, drawing from life is better for, if you want to get better at fine art, um, drawing from life is always the best thing to do. Uh, but if drawing manga is the thing you want to do, even better.
And what exactly is this half breathing method? And what is it supposed to do? Yeah. And trees can be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm 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 Google 